Back toward the beginning of the course, we had this example here of getting the current city. And we even have an error check if that fails. We then make a call to get the weather and forecast in parallel using the city that came back. We capture those responses in local global variables. And we do that so that we can then synchronize these responses and handle them together. And that's what our finish if ready function did. We also have, of course, error handling in here. And in this case, we just bail out of the test if anything goes wrong. And then in finish if ready, we have this check to make sure that we get both responses. And once we do, then we know we're done. We can then perform our final computation on both the results and print out whatever we'd like. Now, when I went over this, I also pointed out that we're missing something here. Any of these function calls we make to kick off a callback could throw errors. So we should have try catches around each and every one of these. If we don't, then we could be missing thrown exceptions and that could bring our application down. This code is just simply unruly. You don't want to write this stuff, but this is what you're faced with with asynchronous operations, especially on the server side when you're interacting with a database or web services and you're making all kinds of async calls to fulfill an operation. Your server side handling logic is insane. It's just not even something you would do. I told you at the beginning, this is what I think this should look like. We should be able to get the current city. And then we should be able to do something like grab two requests. And we just saw this with async await where we can get promises that represent these async ops so that we kick these off in parallel. And then we should just be able to wait for the results just like that. And as we get them, print them out in whatever order we'd like. Well, I've shown you how we can do that now. We can use these new async functions to pull this off. So we have this weather process. We can make an async function for that and we can return the weather process which means that our test framework will catch any errors and show them to us. Which means we don't need any error handling logic inside this weather process function unless we're going to try and recover from something. I can literally copy this example from here and paste this in here now and we can pull this off. And however we'd like, we can move results around. If we want to synchronize the requests, well, that's just as simple as putting this right down here. Boom, we have access to both of the results at the same time. We could combine them or do whatever we'd like transparent synchronization of parallelism. Amazing. So I can ask you, which would you rather maintain? This or this? And that's the value proposition of this course. I hope you have a really good understanding of promises now. And likewise, understanding a good use case of generators. And more importantly, understanding this new construct called async await that's coming in a future version of JavaScript. I hope you're excited enough about this that you're going to try to use some of the libraries that can allow you to leverage this stuff in your apps right now. Because this right here, this makes writing code in JavaScript much more worthwhile, especially on the server side of things. Now we have the non-blocking IO nature of JavaScript, which makes it extremely performant. We now have that and we have code that's highly readable. We get the best of both worlds which is something that's hard to pull off in other platforms that are synchronous and have blocking I.O. If you have questions, don't forget to throw those into the discussion board or just reach out to me. And if you'd like to know more about what I work on and what I do, check out my newsletter. You can sign up for this, and if you want, you can check out past issues to see what I write about.